The situation you're about to see happens every day in most every community. It's very often the case women are attacked on parking ramps, secluded streets, dark doorways, and even in their own home. Women need not be the losers when it comes to a fight for dignity and life. The self-defense techniques in this video will enable any woman to defend herself against an attack and run to safety. Hi, I'm Sue Zelenko. I'm going to be with you throughout this training program today. I've been through the program myself. It's really quite easy and simple to learn techniques that you can use in the case of an attack to strike your attacker and then run to safety. Also, it'll be dealing with prevention and attitude, very important ideas. Our instructor happens to be a black belt in the martial art of jiu-jitsu. His name, Harlan Rose. Sue, you mentioned proper attitude, and that's very significant to me because I design this whole program on the premise that women should be assertive, in control, and at no time appear to be an easy victim. In fact, I really feel that women have a secret weapon, and that's attitude. Let's take a look at the situation you were in in the parking lot in the beginning of this tape. What you're about to see is an example of a power walk. It's a strong posture that might tell a potential attacker you're aware of the situation and possibly avoid an attack altogether. Survey the area you're walking to. Pick up your walking pace. Hold your head high and your shoulders back. If you see a suspicious person, make eye contact. Let him know you're aware of him. Keep your look short and very businesslike. Your car keys should always be in hand. Check a parking lot as you're walking through it, not only for suspicious persons, but people parked in cars. If an attack does occur, drop what you're carrying. Strike if possible, then run fast. Fire! Yell fire. fire. Police say you're more likely to attract fire. attention than if you yell help. Self-defense begins with your posture. Look over the area. Size it up for possible danger. Make your walking pace quick and sharp. Make eye contact with a potential attacker. Let him know you mean business. Always have your car keys in hand. Survey a parking lot. Hey, you. If you are attacked, take action. Get away if possible. Fire! Run and Fire! yell. Fire! Even though I knew the attacker in the parking lot and I knew the outcome of that dramatization, it's still a very frightening situation to be in. I really don't think I'd want to confront an attacker. But Sue, this is only one way that a woman is attacked. Let's look at some examples of some other ways that women are attacked. When walking alone on a street, stay close to the curb to prevent an attack like this. Always remember to check the back seat of a car before you get in. These types of attacks occur too often, yet can be so easily avoided if only the woman would look first before she gets in. Avoid being kidnapped in a parking lot by checking out the vehicles parked next to yours. If there are any suspicious characters inside any nearby car, go back in the store. Get a security guard to escort you or wait until they leave. Don't chance it. A parking lot attack can occur many ways. Don't just check inside your car or around it. Check under it, too. One of the most common attacks occurs in the safety of your car. While you're at a stop light or a stop sign, a person may jump into your car the way to avoid this attack is simply to lock your car doors. One way to kidnap a woman is to cause a car accident. If you're involved in a collision, 
Don't leave the security of your car if you feel threatened. Lock the doors and roll down the window only an inch or two to exchange information with the other driver. Ask the other driver to call the police, but don't leave the security of your car if you feel endangered. A kidnapping like this should never occur if you think first. What you've just seen are several ways that women can be attacked, but what do you do should an attack occur? Well, Sue, the purpose of this tape is to teach you step-by-step -step methods that you can use to get out of these situations that you saw in the dramatizations. But first, this warning. This technique is what we call a snap kick. You, prob you may have read where it's not recommended for women to use a kick in defending themselves. But the reason for that is when you think of a kick, you think of like a football kick where you step off and let your foot go. Well, you do three things there that, that actually makes this a not a desirable kick is when you step off, it telegraphs that you're gonna do something, plus you're looking right at where you're going to kick, so the person can just reach out and grab, grab your foot like this. Very easy. Whereas in the snap kick, you, which is this type of kick, the foot goes out faster, as fast as it comes back. And it's impossible to catch this foot. Plus, I can look you straight in the eyes and do this kick. In fact, that's what's recommended, is the three areas that you'll use this kick for is the shins, the knee, and the groin area. And by looking you right straight in the eyes, I can see all those areas so I can do the kick without you even knowing that the kick is coming. Plus, the foot comes back so fast that you can't catch the foot. Now, this particular technique, there's four steps. One, two, three, four. Now, if I want to kick the shins, I wouldn't lift my knee quite so high. Kick the shins. If I want to kick the knee, I'll lift my knee a little bit higher. If I want to kick the groin area, then my foot will probably be parallel with the ground. Okay? Now, if you want to practice this kick, the first few times I'd like you to do it with the steps, and I'll count. You can use my hand as a target. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, I'd like you to um, kick me in the shin, the knee, in the groin area, but I want you to make sure you're looking me in the eyes and make sure that you can see all three points, okay? The shins, the knee, could you see the knee? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then kick the groin area. Good. Could you see my hand? Also, it's very important, you're uh, probably thinking, what about if I have an open-toed shoe? Now, I'd like to show you here, when you kick the knee or the shin area, you want to try to use, bend your toes back and use the ball part of your foot, the ball of your foot. It's better to roll your toes back and kick with this bottom side of the foot rather than with the end of the toes because you can break your toes that way. Now, when you kick the groin area, you can use your foot in this position, but if you turn, bend the toes down, then you've got all this surface to make contact to the groin area with. So when you kick, the shin or the knee, bottom part of the foot. When you, when you kick the groin area, point your toes down. And you'll have all this surface here again to kick with. This is a very important technique for two reasons. One, it is a very, very effective self-defense technique in itself. Plus, it is used in several of the other techniques that you'll be learning today. So now I'm going to teach you how to defend yourself against a rear choke.
In this situation, a person will grab you by the neck and to control you will pull you backwards to take you to wherever they, wherever they want to. Okay, we turn around. Grab the neck. Now it's it's very important, Sue, that I caution you that whoever your practice attacker is does not have to choke real hard. All he has to do is firmly place the fingers, uh, the fingers in a choking position, without actually choking. That's very important. Now the first step in this technique is to take your hand and reach up like you're trying to grab one finger. Now the reason for this as they find in a choke situation, normally the person who is being choked tries to take the hand, whole hand off, and you do not have the strength to do that. But you can get a hold of one or two fingers and easily bend the hand off the neck. What you're doing is you're reaching for one or two fingers. Now, you've got the hands in the correct position, but the hand is choking real tightly, so you can't, probably can't loosen that finger up. So the way that you loosen that finger up is by stomping the instep and causing the person to flinch, and then that'll loosen that up. So what you do is you look right down at the instep and stomp right in the instep area. Okay, if you'll stomp, please. Okay, so you've stomped the instep now, and that's loosened up the hand. Now you want to take and wrap your whole fist around the finger, and it's important that you have the thumb wrapped around the finger also. Very good. Hold it very tightly and do not let the finger slide. Okay, bend the finger away from the neck. Turn very slowly, and in practicing this, turn deliberately very slowly. In the real situation, you'll get so you'll turn fast, but turn very slowly. Bend the finger back so you straighten up the elbow. Do it in a very slow motion or you can break the person's fi finger. Then when the body starts to raise up, kick the groin area and run to safety. Soon I'm going to teach you how to defend yourself against a front choke. There's really no reason why anybody should ever be choked to death from the front. Now, I want to caution whoever you are training with, make sure that the hands are just firmly on the neck and the thumbs in a position where they can push in. That's the choke. The forces come together and the thumbs come in. Now, what I want you to do, number one, is to put your chin on your chest. Okay, that forces my hand open a little bit and that locks my thumb so I really can't do much more choking, okay? Next step is to bow slightly at the waist and roll your head underneath the arm. Okay. Now strike the nose, turn, and run to safety. So I have noticed at the seminars that I have taught that after the first couple of times with this technique, the person who is the practice attacker, well, instead of pushing the forces this way and pushing in with the thumbs, will actually start lifting up this way and defending against the defense for this. And that really defeats the purpose of actual training. The person who is doing the attacking must continue to push the hands in the right direction and the thumbs in and not, not bend under and try to uh, defend themselves against the actual technique itself. Okay, let's do it one more time. I will reach and choke. You'll do the total technique, spin and run. Very good, Sue. So, as you can see, there's absolutely no reason why anybody should be choked to death from the front. A very easy, very effective self-defense technique to do. Okay, so I taught you how to defend yourself against a choke. Now in this situation, you will actually stop me before I even get to the choke. This is a block and then you gouge the eyes, okay? Now remember, just to review, that <clears throat> when you see that you're going to be attacked, you look me straight in the eyes so you can see my whole body. One foot slightly at the head of the other, and your, your weight is kind of, your balance is kind of concentrated in the center of your body, okay? Now, I will reach for your shoulders, and I want you to block. It's kind of like you're praying. Open up the hand, okay? And that gives you, makes it very hard right through here, okay? And that's what we call the knife edge. That's what you're blocking with. Okay, I'll reach for the shoulders, and I want you like you're praying. Come out this way, bring the hands back together, and then gouge the eyes, okay? Reaching for the shoulders, good block, gouging the eyes. Very good. 
Again, reaching for the shoulders, good block. That's all it is. The body kind of leans forward and you gouge the eyes, and then of course turn and run. One more time. Okay, this time I'd like you to do the whole technique and turn and run. Okay, very good. This, this is the one, of course, we did outside. Okay, so using that same technique, only using, only using one hand, you can defend yourself against two other types of attacks. That's the slap and the punch. For example, if somebody goes to punch you, you strike. Okay, a slap across the face, same kind of block. Now you notice, when you struck me that time with the fingers open, with that block, you hit a nerve right there. And that really shot a sharp pain down my arm. That really hurts, okay? So that's what you caught. Now I'm, I'm kind of shocked a little bit. You, I'm feeling the pain. You can bring the hands back together and rake the fingers. From either the grab, the strike, or the slap, you can bring the hands back together and you can gouge the eyes. So from this one technique that you've learned, you actually have the steps so you can do three different techniques. So if somebody were to grab you by the wrist to either pull you or to just hold you and control you, there's a very effective self-defense technique that I would like to teach you. The first thing is if you want to grab me is if you think you can run 15 or 20 feet and get away from the person and get out to a main street, all you simply have to do is make a circle like this. Once you get the hand turned in this position right there, it's impossible to hang on. Let me show you that again. I'll make a bigger circle than what you'd normally do. All you do is turn the hand 180 degrees, and down. It's impossible to hang on to the hand. Now let me show you, if you do that fast, what you'd feel. Okay? Impossible to hang on. Now I'll do that with you. Do it slow the first time and then do it fast. Just bring the hand around, shoot a block. That's it. Now make a 180 degree circle. That's all you have to do. Very good. One more time. Very good, Sue. Real good. Now if you don't think that you can get away, then there's another technique I'd like to teach you. If you want to grab a hold of the wrist, you go up with the hand like this. This area down here is what we call the horseshoe. Okay? Then I'm making a horseshoe with my hand. I will put the thumb in the horseshoe and I will put the fingers around the hand. Then this hand will turn. My fingers will be with my fingers. My thumb will be with my thumb. For a woman, you want to pull this into your shoulder or your chest area and then bow forward. And that gives you the torque. The bow motion, the bowing motion actually makes you, you torque. And what you're doing is you're, you're not pushing the hand down like this, you're torquing. Torquing. That's what you're really doing is you're making this motion. Okay, this is what we call a torque. Okay, now I'll grab a hold of you, bring the hand up, fingers open, bring your other hand up, thumb in the horseshoe, hand around the rest of the hand, turn the hand, keeping that that's it. Fingers to fingers, thumb to thumb, bring it in, straighten out the elbow, ball forward and do that torque motion. Very good. Very good. That, that technique, it, when, when you learn, it's important that you learn to lock the wrist this way because it's very easy to break the wrist. So of course, in a training situation, the person who is actually doing this technique wants to torque very carefully as you practice this technique so you don't break your practice attacker's wrist. You want to do it very slowly and be very careful and feel that out. The attacker should drop their body down to prevent that from locking. So this technique is where somebody grabs you by both wrists. We looked at one wrist just a few minutes ago, now this is two wrists. And they're either going to try to pull you or they're going to push you away from there. Okay, it's a very simple technique for this. If you want to grab me by the wrist, just bring the hands in a large circle with the hands open, turning the hands with the knife edge, this edge right here, pointing down. And bring the hands straight down, slap the ears, causing the person to lose their equilibrium. Again, if you want to grab the wrist, bringing the hands up, having turning the wrist and having the knife edge of the hand, this edge right here pointing down, bringing the hand straight down and striking. Now I'll do it this time, I'll do it fast. It's really two circles, one where you break the grip and the other one where you slap the ears. One, two, okay? Now I'll grab you by the wrist, 
Do the same thing. Slowly bring the hands up, turning, hands straight down, slapping the ears. Excellent. Very good. You're ready to do it fast. I won't talk you through it this time. Just do the technique. Again. Very good. So this technique is if somebody reaches up behind you and grabs you and locks your arms down at your side so you can't move. If I can, for example here, somebody grabs you this way and they're holding your arms into the side like that. They may even throw you down and hang on to you. But there is a very effective technique that you can do for this. Now, what I want you to do is you're going to reach back and, gro and grab the groin area, but I don't want you to make a jerky or a striking motion or a man is, will defend himself from that. He's sensitive to that. What I want you to do is move your hand back very slowly, back your hand rubbing along your buttocks, grab the groin area, squeeze, twist, turn 180 degrees, kick, and run. Okay, so this isn't limited to just reaching behind you. You can reach off to the side, and grab and squeeze and twist. You can also reach in front of you and grab and squeeze and twist. It's a very effective technique causing the person to scream in horror and pass out. Excellent self-defense technique. Okay, this next technique is what we call the arm choke from the rear. If you'll turn, please person grabs you with the arm this way, leaving this arm free to do whatever they want to with. They start choking. What I'd like to have you do is to grab my hand with both of your hands, pulling my hands away, breaking the choke a little bit. Turn your head to the right, which also helps give you a little bit more room. Take a big step to the right. Also take a big step backwards with your left foot, bending forward, getting me in a hammer lock grabbing my hair, pull my arm and my hair together, and throw me down. I did that technique very well, Sue. So. Sue, have you ever been in a situation where you're at a party or even at work where somebody come up and they put their arm around you and you had already warned this person, or maybe it was somebody that was drinking, and they're sloppy, and they're hanging on to you, and how you doing, baby, and all this kind of stuff. Especially in the case where you had warned the person that you did not want them putting their hands on you, and they're just doing it, really, to intimidate you. The technique that I'd like to teach you this time is really starts out with what you would normally do in this situation. What would you do? You'd grab the hands, and you'd throw them off, and you'd say, look, jerk, keep your hands off me, right? Okay, only this time, you've tried this before and it hasn't worked, so this time we're going to do things a little differently. I want you to grab the hand with both hands, bring the hand up over, only hang on and, and just be very casual about it because the person just thinks you're throwing their hand off, only hang on to the hand, tuck the elbow in under your arm or into your arm, and then lift the wrist up. Now, bend the wrist towards the elbow until I slap my leg when I feel the pain. Excruciating pain. That's really excruciating pain, and that will get the message across. If we can try that again, I'll just come up. How you doing, baby doll? Very good. That's extremely painful. Okay, and this technique called a lapel catch. Somebody grabs you by the lapel and twists like this and they might swing at you. You know, if I went to slap you, of course, you know what to do. Okay, if you want to grab me by the lapel, I make a horseshoe with my hand, my thumb coming down, my fingers coming down this way, put my thumb on the back of your hand, and I put my fingers in the meaty part of your hand. I turn this way, throw this arm up, opening my fingers wide like this. I get my hand on the back of your hand, and then I just Keep my arm in this position and then bring down this way and set you right down on the floor. Okay? I will grab you. Again, the fingers in the meaty part of the hand, the thumb on the back of the hand, turn the hand, throw the arm up, get a hold of the hand, 
and take and put my hand straight down on the floor. Okay, good. That was right. You can also bend back this way. But again, you want to be careful with that one because in training situation, if you really push down, you'll throw the person down and they'll fall in an awkward position or if they don't fall, there's a, good, there's a chance that you'll break their arm or break their wrist. In an attempt to bring a little bit of realism to this video, Harlan and I, as we were going through the techniques, actually hurt each other once or twice, and I honestly didn't mean to. Oh, that's okay. My wrist is better now. You know, our viewers <coughs> could probably learn a lesson from that, and that when they're actually working on these techniques, uh, beginner or not, they can hurt each other, and uh, part of the idea with the videotape is to really practice with it. One time through, you won't be great at the techniques. It does take a lot of time and you should use the videotape over and over again and review the ones that you don't know. Plus, uh, your training with your partner. I think it's very important that the partner that is doing the attacking work with you and not uh, try to make the uh, doing the self-defense techniques difficult for you because there's an element of surprise. Somebody grabs you by the wrist and you do a technique real quick, they're surprised. So it's very important that your partner not just grab a hold of your wrist and, and really hang on tight and try to prevent you from doing the technique. It's better to work with you. That can also understand. cause an injury too. That can also cause an injury. But again, Sue, prevention is what's really important and there are several ways that a woman can prevent being attacked. If you're walking, there are many things you can do to be safe. Avoid walking alone at dark. Your best defense is having people around you. Stay away from shortcuts, dark streets, unpopulated areas, alleys, vacant lots, or empty buildings. When walking, try to stay as close to the curb as possible. Walk on the other side of the street, facing traffic, so you can see any automobile approaching you. Never hitchhike. If you are on foot and you're being followed, make sure your follower is aware that you know of his presence. If your follower is in a car, run in the opposite direction of the curb, or if possible, on a one-way street so that the car can't follow you. If you're shopping late in the evening, take a companion along. Keep valuables and purses or wallets out of sight. Many rapes originate as robberies. If you think you're being followed, drive to a busy, well-lit business establishment and call for help. If you're sure you're being followed, keep blowing your horn or blinking your lights. If you're approached at a stoplight, keep your windows up and your doors locked. If you have car trouble, raise your hood and then get back in your car and lock the door. If another motorist offers help, roll down the window only an inch or so and ask him to call the police, your husband or a trusted person. Don't stop to help another motorist in trouble. Drive to the nearest phone and call in help for him. Never pick up hitchhikers. Even your home can be dangerous. Be safe by having your house keys in your hand when you leave your car and go into your house or apartment. Have the locks changed when moving into a new apartment or a home. Install deadbolts and, if possible, peepholes in the doors. Lock your windows. A screen is no protection. Many rapists find their victims by peeping through a window. Always keep curtains closed or shades down after dark, especially when dressing or undressing. If you are alone at home at night, keep lights on in at least two different rooms. That'll give the appearance that you're not home alone. Teach your children never to open doors to strangers. Require identification from all repairmen and utility men before unlocking your door. Avoid deserted laundry rooms in an apartment complex. If you suspect someone is in your home or apartment, don't go in to investigate. Leave quickly and quietly and phone the police from a neighbor's home. Every assault situation is unique. For example, in purse snatching. If somebody is trying to snatch your purse and there's a crowd of people around, you may get help. But if you're in an isolated area and you try fighting for your purse, you may be risking your life. Again, all situations are unique. For example, if you can run from a situation, then turn and run to safety. If you can talk your way out of a situation, and your instincts tell you that you can do that, then I recommend that you talk. But if your instincts tell you that you're in a situation where you have to fight for your dignity as a woman or for your life, believe me, you can fight and win.